Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. I'll share with you something which I think I have a PhD in <laughs> and that is uh, failure, okay? And I'll tell you why exactly I'm sharing, uh, you know, today's video about failure. You know, when uh, there was this crypto boom, the cryptocurrencies were going up and up and up. So many people jumped into it, so many people. People, even I know YouTubers who never spoke on crypto, who didn't know jack shit about crypto, they also jumped into it and they started churning out content about crypto. They started writing articles about crypto. They started uh, creating new channel merchandise, going for crypto events and all. It was crazy. And guess what? They were making a lot of money. Okay. Many people suggested I also go. For me, money doesn't just drive, money doesn't drive me, man. If I'm not passionate, I can't do it. Because I always look at the long term. I don't look at short term. There are some people who enjoy this, but it's not me. So what happened is many people, almost everybody, every single person made money. Every single. There was not a single individual who did not make money. So what happens is when you make money? Tell me, what happens when you make money? You become confident, you become overconfident. Not just confident, overconfident. You feel you are God. It's like meeting someone, let's say a fighter. A fighter, he fights one guy and he won. Okay, his confidence will go up. Fights the second guy, he wins, goes up. He fights the third guy, he wins, goes up. So if he keeps fighting and he keeps winning, obviously he'll think he's invincible. There are so many fighters who fight, 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 fight. They go right at the top. And then when they're going to fight for the world championship, they just believe they're destined to achieve that. It happened uh, with this new UFC fight. Anyway, the challenger, he won. But there are so many cases. Historically, if you see fights, there are so many guys who kept winning, never lost never ever lost but then they finally meet their kryptonite they meet that one person who defeats them and here's the part that is scary after this one person defeats them there are only two things that can happen either they bounce back and come back stronger or their decline starts they start losing one then they lose another one, then they lose another one. And very soon they start losing so many times, they actually question themselves. They, their confidence goes. They ask themselves, am I really a champion? Am I really the world's best? Am I really meant to succeed? And I've seen this with so many people. Like I'll give you simple examples. Let's start with my family. My mother and my stepfather, uh, they came to Dubai in the early 80s. And in the early 80s, it was just a desert that was just growing. My father was only, uh, like his qualifications were only made him fit for being a clerk or a telephone operator. That's all his qualifications there. My mother, you know, she was like a freelance, always looking to work outside the realm of the job. She was teaching Arab ladies exercise, even though she did not jack shit about it. There was no internet, there was no videos, nothing. But she would see Jane Fonda and all that and she would copy them. She didn't know anything about uh, exercise. She had no qualifications, nothing. She didn't know anything of dieting. She would read magazines that 
where they're in spinnies, there's one outlet where, you know, foreign magazines, are. she used to buy that and read, or she used to take photocopies from other people. Okay, that's how my, my, my mother taught herself exercise and became the so-called expert in dieting as a dietitian. She actually had a card, I remember. Uh, what exercise teacher, dietitian, and all this other stuff, and and she didn't know anything of makeup. I'll tell you, my now when I look at it, my mother's makeup skills were putting powder and putting something and making herself look like a clown. That was the skill that my mother had. But those days, it was good enough. So with that level of skill, competence, and intelligence, my my mother and my stepfather made so much money, so much money, they ended up purchasing, like at their peak, I think they had uh, Bombay or Mumbai, today it's called, is the most expensive properties in India. They had one shop and I think two flats, I'm not too sure, one or two, but they had three properties, plus they had land in the southern part of India. So just imagine, they were so rich from practically being zero from the village. So obviously the confidence went sky high, right? And my stepfather from being a clerk, you know, who was hardly getting peanuts, he started to get paid that of a manager. By today's standards, if I were to translate his salary, he was getting almost like Example I'm giving, huh? example. You could say maybe five to eight thousand dollars or even ten thousand dollars just to answer a phone. Just imagine that. Just answer a phone. Telex, there was something called Telex, tele, Telegram and Fax. Maybe you, I don't know if you still know what it is. Those days that used to be common. He just knew typing, he was a typist. So with that, my stepfather used to earn that much because he kept growing in that company, you know. So their confidence was sky high. They believed they could do anything. They literally believed they could become millionaires. Lo and behold, the gold rush to the Gulf. That time it was called the Gulf. Middle East was called the Gulf. Indians know that. He, very soon, they bought in Indians many and when they occupied high level positions or they started their own business they finally revealed the secret that you can get cheap labor from India there's almost like a that time it was not a billion people but you have so many ready to work for cheap cheap means 10 times less salary 10 times less can you imagine what that did so very soon they started targeting Bangladeshi, Sri Lankans, Africans, Indians, Filipinos who were competitively better, much better, more qualified and ready to work for one-tenth what my father was getting. So do you think he'd be able to hand on to his job? No. He used to actually walk with his hands behind him like this. He used to think that he was like a, like you know, a doctor with authority. You used to act like that. Ah, how life changes. And, uh, but did my father and mother get scared? No, they didn't get scared. They thought, I remember my mother telling me when I was giving an idea or suggestion or something, she was like, don't teach me. You don't know who I am. Okay, you don't know who I am. I made you like this. I can turn like this. I can make money like this. She actually told me when she was... I think in her late 40s, like my age, obviously, you have a young kid telling you, you'll say, shut the fuck up. You know? Even I would have said maybe the same thing. Unfortunately, after one failure, then they experienced another failure. My, my stepfather lost his job. He thought he would get any job anywhere. He didn't get anything for, he tried for 15 years after he lost his job. A job that he held on to almost 25 years. Then for the next 15 years he tried, nothing he got. He mentally broke down, completely lost all his confidence. 
became a shell of himself, became like 1% of what he confidence and belief he had. My mother, um, she tried to, she was delusional, I could say. She thought no end of herself. She was mentally more tough, but uh, that stubbornness to believe that she was invincible, she ended up losing all the houses, all the property, all the money, including my father's savings. She bought them to the road, to the streets. And today they are living in Mangalore, bankrupt. My stepbrother is taking care of them. Okay, I'm not. Because they always believed he was their son and he used to, those days, he say, I'll take care of my father and mother. That time, being the elder one, I was like, you'll take care of them? Okay. What I care? So I didn't mind it. So he takes care of them. So I'll kudos to him for that. He's a good son. I'm not. I don't send them a single penny. So they thought he would take care of them and now automatically he has realized they are a bloody liability. Not only liability in terms of money, very toxic individuals, very, very toxic. He didn't understand in my, when I was getting abused, when I was out of the picture, they needed someone else to abuse, right? Targeted him. So they both became a shell of themselves, like my parents. I've seen so many people who were legends, who were big shots, who were millionaires. As times changed, they went down to dust. Not dead, but nothing. So I was telling you about cryptocurrencies, no? So when people started to make money and they started to get rich, you know, just imagine people who booked my service to take advice from me because now they made more money per month than I did or more money per day. Like, let's say, for example, I was making $500 a day. They were literally making 1000 2000 5000 I know even of a guy who made up to $100,000 huh, on just one trading. Just right place, right time, right everything. So obviously, the confidence will go to the moon, right? I remember this one particular guy who I've given an example on YouTube. He used to follow my content for six, seven years or whatever. And, you know, I'm totally anti-crypto. So one day, this guy, he comments below my videos and says, Loy, uh, you know, I've been following your content for six years. Actual, no? this I'm paraphrasing. This actually happened. He said, I've been following your content for six years or whatever. You say most of the people are keyboard warriors. They're afraid to share their real name and identity. This is my real account. My real name is Abdul Karim something, some name he put. Okay, my age and I was working as this. I came to you for the services of resume rebranding and consulting. Okay. And that time I was only earning 3000. I was only earning 3000 dirhams. Okay. Uh, and I followed your advice because I wanted to earn 5000. But if I had listened to you, I would continue earning only that. Today, because I chose not to listen to you, I went into crypto. Today I have uh, some BMW, Mercedes, some big car. I have a very big car. I have purchased down payment cash, a three bedroom villa. I have uh, a business that is doing very well in Dubai. I'm opening up branches in Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Malaysia, Philippines, related to crypto. Okay. And uh, I'm planning my turnover. I'm, my target is hundred million dollars. Huh? Dollars. And uh, he's like, but you're the same. You will continue earning the same. You'll still be without a shirt, roaming naked and talking all big, big. He's saying, I used to respect you before. I've lost total respect. He's saying, today I'm giving you advice. Better grow up. Better change. He gave me a big lecture. So, fine. He put his real name, real. I said, I just told him, this is where you are currently. Time will tell. Let's see what will happen. He's saying, yeah, let's see. I'm here, you're here. Take it as an open challenge. Fine. Now, you know, I know what happened to crypto. 
people who had millions lost every single thing this guy had a website before with his company name he had his own website he even created his own website you know part of personal branding and all that he had his facebook he had everything after cryptocurrency crashed obviously i'm curious no vanished his company doesn't exist his company website doesn't exist his website doesn't exist his linkedin page doesn't exist his facebook nothing exists now there can be two possibilities either he made his millions and ran away or he lost everything now given the fact that almost everyone everyone the majority of the people who were not the early adopters they lost my gut feeling maybe i'm being biased my gut feeling says he lost everything otherwise you know why does he have to hide he could still make another business no he could still show that he was there so the point i'm trying to make through these examples is you know when times are good no when the economy is booming we all feel invincible we feel nothing can touch us it can be someone with a stable job a powerful position you know good money success maybe a stable marriage maybe newly married in love you will think no end of yourself you will think nothing can stop you you're unstoppable and mostly youngsters all of us we have that belief i have met so many who are in their 20s and 30s who got a good break high position in their young age and uh, it went on for 5 years 10 years working in a multinational company what they didn't think was maybe i got lucky being the right guy at the right place at the right time maybe i got lucky because you know luck only takes you so so much you know with hard work and everything but after that no man and it is only when they lost their job or they resigned or or you know some people because they have one successful business they'll open 10 branches five branches or they'll try okay i'm successful in this business i'll open another four different kinds of businesses people do all sorts of things it's a risk no more branches more staff more people more other investments but then they don't think that i might fail they do know that it'll be a failure but they don't believe it can affect them or impact them but when failure hits you then what do you do man or oh, some people they are able to bounce back depending on their risk appetite but for many others they can't bounce back because they didn't develop any skill any talent any method of saving themselves like i told you know my father and step uh, my step father and mother too late they didn't have any skill they were purely working hard but on luck what do you think my mother could do at nearly late 40s learn exercise no she was overweight learn makeup no there were too many youngsters young girls who were doing makeup for cheap teach dietitian she she didn't know anything about the science of losing weight and she was lucky in business when the business was booming she thought she assumed she was a business woman she was not so finished dead and gone so you ask yourself are you being overconfident right now you have a good job you have a good relationship you have good maybe your age or whatever then what will happen if that goes away like if you have a job right now you think oh i have a job man i can get jobs apply and see no see how many responses you get that is where you will come to know whether you really are right or wrong and most of the people don't do that because they are very afraid to face that reality See these doggies. Ah, ah, doggy.
Yes. Why are you barking? It's me. Look at the size of this. You can see. Size of these doggies. Th these are small. This guy is big. Oh, there's another doggy. Sorry. This guy, say. So yeah, if you're overly confident about a relationship, ask yourself if it breaks up, what will happen? Hey. Hmm. Hey, go for me. Hmm. Go for me. Go. Hmm. Go. Yeah. Because they'll end up injuring themselves. You know, these they'll bite each other's face and simply I have to separate them. Anyway, shouldn't interfere with fighting dogs. Anyway. So what I'm saying is, if you have a marriage and you're overly confident that nothing will happen or you're dependent on your partner, what if something does happen? You know, I ask myself, today I can talk, what if I lose my voice? I type, what if I lose my fingers? What if I become paralyzed? What if, you know, like people ask me, what if one day they throw you out of Thailand? Well, I tell them, you think I have not thought about it. What if one day YouTube shuts down or shuts me down or we don't have answers to this no but that is what keeps me grounded i'll tell you the fear the, like i told you at the beginning of the video i have experienced a lot of fear uh, sorry a lot of failure a lot of failure that is why you can never be overly confident so the only saving grace you'll have is not just have money, keep money, save money. That is also a strategy. Keep developing yourself. Keep learning. Keep going to your mentor. And never stop working hard. Never ever stop working hard. You know? And never think you're unbeatable or invincible. You just don't know when it's your time. Anyway, this is what I wanted to share with you guys. Maybe next video that I'll make is overcoming failure. Failure and overcoming failure. I think that you'd find interesting. All right. As usual, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. It's me signing off. You guys take care. Ciao.